We turned the whole house into a booth. We in the kitchen. Ooh. Uh, let her cook. What it do? What's up, your girl G here? Welcome back to my channel. Now, look, I know I'm a little bit late with this review. I didn't even know Real Housewives Beverly Hills was coming out um, this week. So, this is going to be like a real quick review. Um, because I want to catch up and then finally, if I can finally also get to Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, because I've been watching y'all and it has been good. And let me tell you, Broadwin is up here in heaven. I'm sorry, girl, but you need to come down a couple of notches. Okay. We know you had a good season last season, but now it's starting to, it's starting to get a little, uh, crazy. The amount of ego that you're running around with uh, this season, okay? And it's got you acting all types of uh, backwards. But let's go ahead and get to Ralph Swaz of Beverly Hills. Um, we're going to do this really quick. And then um, I got to get ready to go. I got to go help my mom with um, picking her up from a rental car situation and all that. So that's why this review is going to kind of be more of just like a quick, you know, quick chat, quick, you know, catching and everything like that. But you already know what to do. Like this video, okay? Hit the like button. I'm going to pause for likeation. You hit that button? Did you hit that button? Okay. All right. And if you haven't subscribed and you're new to your girl's channel, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. We open up and we are with Sutton first and Miss Jennifer Tilly. I'm always going to remember Jennifer Tilly from, from those who, you know, grew up in the 90s. Chucky's Bride. Um, Chucky's Bride, when that one came out, I remember that just being my favorite Chucky movie because it was just too funny. Um, and I love her voice. Um, her voice and what's that other woman? They got the tight face and torch like this. Oh my gosh. Hey. You know, y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, they got very recognizable, you know, voices. <laughs> um, so she was in like, uh, American Pie and she always played like the MILF character. Um, so yeah, Jennifer Tilly, uh, Sutton is over there. So it's giving, she's kind of going to be like a friend of the show this season. So Sutton goes over there and they're just, you know, catching up and stuff like that. And Sutton describes, um, you know, her trying to be better with, uh, Kyle, you know, she's like thinking back and realizing like, you know, last, you know, last we saw each other, I really could have been a better friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, as far as like being a quote unquote, you know, better friend, um, uh, I don't know, because, you know, were you close with Kyle Sutton? Yes, but Kyle has definitely been giving, you know, friendship uh, uh, out of both sides of her neck, like, how she's doing with Dorit is ten, it's kind of how she like to do with everybody. It's like, you're a friend and then you think you're somebody friend. And like a lot of people be thinking they Kyle's friend, but then Kyle be hitting you with the, girl, I don't know you. Like, what's, what's the, what Mariah Carey, uh, yeah, Mariah Carey, I don't know her. Like, but Sutton is, I guess, kind of realized that maybe in the, in the grand scheme of things, because Kyle was like, you know, is, is, you know, just telling you that we're divorcing, is that good enough for you? Like, why is that not good enough? Because Kyle, you on a goddamn TV show and we have to, you know, talk about your life. And what the rumors were was that Mauricio was taking his own finance around town, around the agency and dipping it and doing it with other women. So yeah, because she was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And Garcelle was like, your marriage. You kept trying to like dance around it and Sutton had a job to do, okay? Now granted, one of the problems that is on this show is like when, you know, you're doing things for the sake of the show and it's like, but they still got real life consequences. That's kind of what this situation was. Was Sutton, you know, getting in Kyle's ass for the sake of the show? Yes, but it doesn't negate the real life, you know, feeling of like feeling, you know, betrayed a little bit. Like, girl, you my friend. So why are you trying to out me? Why are you trying to oust me like that? You know? So she was realizing, you know, I miss Kyle. You know, I would send her things and, you know, I just didn't like that feeling. So, you know, um, we are better now. Okay. So speaking of Kyle, Kyle, she over at her house struggling boots because, you know, she don't know how to work the pool. She don't know how to work the TV. You know, her daughters are getting older. One of the next to oldest daughter, she went off to college. So it's literally just her and the youngest one, Sophia. 
And so it's different. Obviously, when you get a divorce, there is a transition period. And so she's, you know, having to work through that. So as she's trying to figure out the goddamn TV, Erica is trying to figure out, you know, what new furniture she's going to put in her, you know, downsized house because she was living large and in charge with over there with Mr. Girardi. But we found out that life was being funded, you know, by the old folks, burn victims <laughs> and all other victims. Tom Girardi was given what we know white men to do, just being nothing but thieves. Okay. Um, so she is trying to refurnish her home. You know, the all the stuff that she took, she basically was like, she, Erica left that house with basically nothing but her panties and her furniture, okay? She had to get out the house while she could and took whatever she could um, of value, i.e. them earrings, <laughs> okay? But Erica was going to keep them earrings until the court said no, okay? Um, but now she's got all this furniture and she's ready to not have it in her space because every time she look at it, you know, it's obviously going to bring up, you know, the past. So she's at the little furniture store and I'm so tired of every time we get on these housewife shows, the furniture stores they be choosing are so unnecessarily expensive. Like, I, look, my furniture is giving real Timu, okay? <laughs> Uh, real Ikea realness because we can get the dupes, okay? And Erica, the way you was making it sound last season with your money is giving you need to find the dupes, okay? And not the, 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 the fancy schmancy furniture. But I digress. If you made a little money last season or you, you know, your little Vegas residency got you some coinage, I mean, girl, go ahead and spend your money. But I'm just going to let you know, <laughs> A lot of don't don't get yourself back in, in in a rut trying to keep up with the Joneses. So um Dorit meets her, okay, y'all. Dorit is locked and loaded, ready for this season because um her house depends on it, okay? Her her well-being depends on it, okay? And y'all know Dorit loves a good uh, uh a good designer fit head to toe. She will go Fendi from the headband all the way down to the toenail polish, okay? She one of those girls. So um, Erica and her chatting and, you know, catching up or whatever. And uh, Dorit, you know, since I was like, well, you know, I got some good news and bad news. And so Erica was like, oh, Lord, like, let me sit down. But she's like, wait, I don't want to sit on the white furniture because, you know, the white girls love putting like that 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 self tanner. They be rubbing it all on their legs and stuff. That's something I remember seeing often growing up. When self tanner came out, when I tell you the girls would be in the locker room just rubbing it, fingers be all dirt brown and just orange and stuff, tragic. Um, but Dorit, you know, starts with the bad news and she spit it out. Me and me and me and PK, me and PK are getting a divorce. And Erica was like, Ooh, okay, all right. And she was like, I don't want to be sad. And Doreen the confessional was like, you know, is it odd that I'm telling Erica, you know, given what happened last, you know, at BravoCon? And we know BravoCon, Erica was, you know, being a showman, being messy because who was the next couple to go to Splitsville? She said Doreen and PK. Um, but it actually turned out to be Mauricio and um, and Kyle. But Doreen did say, I appreciate how Doreen said, you know, Erica wasn't seeing anything that I wasn't already, you know, knowing. Like, everybody could see through, you know, Doreen and PK's relationship that there was a little bit of, you know, friction. So, um, you know, she's just letting her know, like, yeah, you know, me and him, uh, we, we're just going to go through a separation right now. We're not telling the kids until we can try to figure everything out. And, you know, she's like, well, what was going on? Like, what went wrong? She was like, you know, was it just one major event? You know, it wasn't like cheating or anything like that, you know, but at the end of the day, like we just, you know, we weren't having a meeting of the minds anymore. And then not only that, PK liked that look, okay? PK, he loved that brown. <laughs> he loved the extra bougie, uh, old uh, age Chardonnay that gets you drunk in two glasses. You know, she called him a full-blown alcoholic this episode. So, um, yeah, she was like, you know, he went sober and uh, at the reunion last season. But here's one thing I always say, and I've all, I, I noticed this pattern. Every time a couple says, 
oh, we're better than ever. It's the best we've ever been. Anytime that is said, I already know the relationship is finna go down, down under, okay? Anytime I hear, oh, we're better than ever. It's the best we've ever been. Okay. Okay. So now we're in this situation of, uh, they, the relationship is kind of slowly going up in flames, but at this moment, they're not trying to rush a divorce. They are just in separation until they can figure it out. You know, PK was struggling with Dorit after the whole, um, you know, break in situation and Dorit struggling with the fact that his ass always gone. You want to be gone. And I'm literally basically a married single woman, something that we hear all too often. Um, and so Erica and her get into the relationship with Kyle. She was like, well, have you told Kyle yet? Cause she's like, I haven't told anybody. And cause Erica's like, well, I'm getting ready to go see Kyle. You want me to like, you know, obviously I, I won't say nothing if you want, want me to. And she was like, yeah, no, don't say nothing. And so, you know, we got to get into the fact that Dorit and Kyle got to figure out their relationship. This for me, I think with Kyle definitely stemmed from that time that Dorit Took up for Kathy. Kathy, we ain't forgot that, 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 that hot mic moment that Bravo is keeping from the viewers where Erica called out the fact that you called somebody the F word, okay? You got upset at him and you wanted Kyle to follow your ass out and she didn't. And Kathy's an old rich white woman. So how dare you not listen to me, okay? And so... As she's, uh, Kyle is speaking to Kathy, Dorit went to pipe up like, well, just listen to her, Kyle. And she was like, skirt, skirt, skirt. Wasn't nobody talking, wasn't nobody talking to you, okay? Shut your bitch ass up before I get to talking shit about you. All right. So, yeah, Kyle, um, definitely ever since then, I think just was not here for Dorit. Um... And, uh, also as well, Kyle, um, her issue with that reunion part two is the fact that Dorit showed the text message that Kyle sent her. And she was like, you know, Kyle can be manipulative. We ain't talked this whole time, but right before the reunion, she sent a text message basically alluding to like, not saying nothing, you know, it's just like don't bring up stuff that could really hurt me and my family essentially because her and Kathy go through this, you know, we hate each other, love each other, you know, cycle all the time. Um, and Kyle, one, I think she just fears, you know, one, letting Kathy down and being on her bad side because Kathy gives real petty Betty and manipulative herself and very facetious behind the scenes. And Kyle doesn't want that. She doesn't want the feeling of being iced out because Kathy Hilton is that girl, you know? She hosts all the parties and all the events and things like that. And so Kyle knows that's why probably a lot of these women don't, you know, really stand up to Kathy or, or don't, you know, go against her because they're socialites, you know? Um, so uh, that's one of the reasons that Kyle is upset at her. But Dorit's like, you know, I've had it with Kyle, you know, she's manipulative. And when the producers or like the, the production pan to camera uh, to Kyle and that slow motion, <laughs> that hair flip just slow motion, boy, I was hollering. It was giving real Regina girls, uh, Regina uh, King mean girls, you know, no, is it Regina King? Regina George. Where the King? Go? Oh, Regina King. Yeah, real Regina George. But um, Erica goes over to Kyle's, you know, and she starts having her conversation about Dorit. And um, it also just caused like, you know, how she struggled with Mauricio being gone and all that type of stuff like that. And, um, you know, Erica talks to her about what her issues are with Dorit. And Kyle basically, you know, is upset about the whole Kathy situation, the text message. She felt that it was so like, oh my God, how are you my friend? He's like, how do you betray me like that? Because Kyle didn't know about her, uh, Dorit showing anybody the text message. But the only reason you're upset is because of what it said, Kyle. Like, let's be real. You were just mad that she blew up your spot. Um, because Kyle and Kathy give real, you know, puppeteering behind behind the uh the scenes so um 
uh, Erica was like, you know, it just seems like a really, you know, like a miscommunication more than anything. You know, y'all really just need to talk to each other. Um, and hopefully, you know, work things out. I'm trying to think what else did they say was a problem? Um, it was delete the text messages. Um, I think that was it. So then we get to Garcelle, her scene. Garcelle's over there talking to her whole ass son. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that, but <laughs> I mean to blurt out like this whole ass son, but her son is a hoe, okay? We know Oliver was flirting with the, with the old women, okay? And he had a girl at the time, and that girl, they just had a baby, if I'm not mistaken. And then as well, with that girl, he was on Vanderpump Rules, with Raquel's ass, they were sitting there uh, smooching in the club, okay? I want to make love in this club, in this club, okay? They was over there uh, kissing and, and making out in the club and stuff, and he had a woman. But y'all know him and that girl ain't together no more. And he got a new one. He got another woman. And so Garcelle was just like, you know, I need him to take it, take it slow, because... Oliver just gives real bad boy, you know, prison tattoo, you know, by the, by, by the eyebrow, you know, just real toxic dick energy, okay? Um, but, you know, she's just talking to him and just, you know, uh, thinking back on life and just how, you know, her career is still flourishing and things like that. And Garcelle's confessional look, I loved they actually got the red color, you know, perfect and how it was, you know, blown out and curly. I love that confessional look. Um, and um, now Oliver was like on one of the sets with her. And so as she's talking to Oliver, the news flashing everywhere, you know, you know, Dorit and PK Hensley, you know, announces divorce and she puts out a statement and <laughs> she's like, oh, Dorit, you know, she long winded. She's reading the statement. Um, and it's, I hope y'all couldn't hear that truck in the background. And it's per usual, you know, um, we're going to take this slow. And, you know, we hope, just we ask that you just respect our privacy as we figure it out, all that, you know, stuff. And so um, Kyle, you know, gets the text, the, the, the notification and was just like, oh my God, you know, like this is, this is crazy. But now she's feeling like, do I even text Dorit? Because... The minute I text her, she's going to say, you know, I'm being manipulative. <laughs> and so speaking of PK, PK and Mauricio's boyness is over there, you know, having a, a good old scotch neat and talking about, you know, the process of divorce. And PK is like, you know, this is really hard for me right now, you know, and Mauricio basically was like, yeah, there's going to be some days that you're going to hate that, that are going to be hard. You know, there are some days that you'll be OK. It won't, it won't be as bad. He's like, I just had to learn to just embrace the journey. Like whatever your emotions are going to be, just, you're just going to have to allow them, you know? And so, um, um, he basically tells Mauricio how him and Dury have decided not to tell the kids. Um, so, uh, everybody is preparing for Sutton's, um, surrealism party. Um, but after, man, I, I forgot, PK... And he, but he's talking about like, yeah, you know, we were deciding not to tell the kids. We're just really going to work on things. When I tell you they flashed to Dorit with the... <laughs> she was so stressed out smoking that cigarette. And I don't know why, but y'all, I immediately thought of Helen from Diary of a Mad Black Woman. The way she was just puffing and blowing out the window, but on uh, Watch What Happened Live uh, with Andy, she said, because Andy was like, oh my God, that's the first we've seen you, you know, smoke. And it's giving real, you know, Dorit is one of those secret smokers. You know, after she put the bed, the kids to sleep, she go out on the patio and smoke her good two, two long John cigarettes, okay? Uh, with a glass of uh, Moscato. And so she was like, uh, you know, I was driving like that because I was being chased by paparazzi. Because y'all, she was, okay, she was fast and furious. But the way she was smoking that goddamn cigarette had me hollering. Um, so, uh, yeah, everybody's getting prepared for Sutton's party. Surrealism theme. 
Erica killed it. Um, Sutton was like, okay. Garcelle, like everybody else was just kind of like, okay. Um, but then we get introduced to, to Bose. And Dorit and Bose hit it off right away. They sitting there talking to each other about, you know, being getting a divorce. And Bose, she was in the process of getting ready to get divorced, but then her husband got sick. So she pulled a whole, had to pull a whole Nene. Basically, how am I supposed to divorce a man that's on his deathbed? You know, like I'm not going to get any type of, you know, support in that. And she, Bose is the definition of, of a boss. I'm a boss ass bitch, bitch. Okay. She was like a, a, an executive at Netflix and Uber and like all these companies. Okay. So as they're hitting it off. Garcelle, Sutton, everybody sitting down at the table because we all know what's going to happen. Kyle, she's there. Um, they had a girl in yellow perform, giving nothing but uh, pussy power. And so, speaking of uh, uh, Coochie, Kyle sits down with Garcelle and starts talking about Morgan, essentially. But she was like, you know, that person. She's like, I don't want to say her name because, you know, that's not fair, you know, um, publicly it was just so it sometimes you know the social media and things can can make it intense and you know blow everything out of proportion and she basically was like in her confessional you know everybody just you know constantly talking about it and you know bring up Morgan and, and just our relationship like yeah it made me question you know myself at sometimes because at the reunion she kind of admitted like when he Andy asked oh so you are you and Morgan gonna be a thing she was like, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Like, uh, like, I mean, I like it could be, but I don't know. You know, I'm trying to figure that out. I think she's afraid to admit it because of Kathy. Because Kathy don't do that gay shit, okay? She called a uh, old dude uh, a maggot with an F up there in Colorado. I think she's scared to admit it because of Kathy. Um, she knows Kathy's views. So, um, as well, she was trying to say like, oh, you know, I don't want to embarrass my daughters, you know, and, 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 and do all this. And so I'm glad Garcelle caught her out with the, I mean, well, that music video didn't help. Like y'all was sitting there kissing and hugging and the music videos and stuff. But you know what I think? I think Kyle was trying to get back at Mauricio. I think she was trying to hurt Mauricio get back at him she was acting out you know I think she was just doing everything she could to just shake it a twist you know and in the meantime because you uh you don't want to say her name but you get her name tattooed on you like you can't put that off on everybody else Kyle this is what we mean about accountability and speaking of Dorit hits her with the hey it sits down and everybody's like well this is awkward <laughs> Kyle over there trying to help Kathy put on ugly ass tracks now because she hot. I don't know how the tracks was going to make her hot, but okay. Um, and so Kyle and Dorit get the chit chatting and everybody else get up like, you need a drink, even though they had a cup in their hand. And so Kyle was like, you going to leave me? She was like, yup. So she was like, look, Dorit, you know, I love you and our relationship. I know it needs to get better, uh, better. It need, I know it needs to get better, you know, but I just really want to work through this, work through this and not, you know, go back to a bad place. It was given she wanted to smooth over things and not have to deal with them. She wanted to just sweep it under the rug because she doesn't want to really have to dig into things that she's really upset about because one of the things is Kathy. Kyle goes back and forth with being afraid of Kathy. Um, and so Dorit was like, well, that's not going to happen, Kyle. She was giving her energy, okay? And Kyle didn't know what to do. She was like, what What are you doing? Like, what? Are, why are you acting like this? She's like, because I ain't putting up with your shit, Kyle. And I was like, oh. <laughs> she's like, I ain't putting up with your shit, okay? Um, and Kyle was like, what do you mean? Like, Dorit, like... I'm, I'm just like, I am don't understand. Like, why are you trying to act like this? And she was like, you know, uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. You know, and it's giving Dorit, you know, these bills got to get paid. Because y'all know, allegedly, they four months behind on their rent, on their mortgage. Okay? Um, and clearly that insurance money that they got, uh, or I'm assuming they tried to file for after getting, um, you know, all that shit stolen, <laughs> ain't, ain't going to put a dent in it. Okay? So the episode basically ends with to be continued with uh with Dorit letting Kyle know 
this ain't finna be an easy season. We not finna just brush this under the rug so we don't have to uh, address our issues. And she told Kyle that she was like, you know, it was just, you know, all the things that was saying to her. And she was like, Kyle, unless we gonna really talk about that, you know, what's really the issues, you know, we, we might as well just leave it alone. Like, we need to really get into the nitty gritty. Um... And yeah, Kyle just doesn't want to admit how much it has to do with that Kathy situation. She want to just put it off on the, oh, at BravoCon, uh, she got asked about her favorite uh, Hilton sister or whatever. And Doree was just going to do, you know, cute little, you know, how you drink to kind of avoid it. And Kyle, Kyle hit her hand and it ended up spilling the drink on her. So Doree just jokingly was like, well, it's Kathy, you know. And Kyle, you're trying to use that as an excuse to why you're upset. Like, come on. Like Doree said, miss me with the bull. We not, we not finna do that. We gonna really get into what's the real issues or we not finna talk at all. Um, and so yeah, you guys, that was the first episode. We caught up now. Um, I'ma try to get into Real Housewives of Salt Lake City finally. But y'all drop down in the comments. What y'all think about Kyle trying to put it off on everybody else about her lesbian relationship, okay, with Morgan? Um, and what you think about Doree, okay? Is Doree finna bring it this season? Are y'all on the Doree bandwagon? Um, and what do you think the real issue that Kyle has with, uh, with Doree and Doree has with Kyle? What do y'all think is like one of the big main issues between them? I appreciate you for tuning in. Y'all make sure to follow Instagram and Twitter. All right. And I'll catch y'all hoes later. Deuces.